A simple internet search for how to pass a drug test returns millions of results for products or information supposedly guaranteed to help people beat urine drug tests, saying they eliminate substances from the body or cover up substances in a sample. And of course, there are numerous synthetic urine products that claim they are guaranteed to pass a drug test. But do any of these commercial products or home remedies work? In this video, I'm going to review some of the more common examples that we encounter, explain why they're almost always ineffective, and why some can be very dangerous. When an individual intentionally tries to subvert a drug test, it's called tampering. When we talk about tampering in urine drug testing, typically we are talking about attempts at diluting, adulterating, or substituting samples. Dilution can be as simple as consuming large quantities of fluids to dilute the concentration of a drug in the urine or flush the drug out of the body prior to, to a drug test. Adulteration is when a substance is added directly to a specimen to destroy the drug in the sample or interfere with its detection in the laboratory. And finally, substitution is when an individual submits water or another fluid, synthetic urine, or another individual's drug-free urine in place of their own. In most cases, there are protocols in place at both the time of the collection and in the laboratory to identify tampering. Specimen collectors can directly observe the sample when it's provided, examine its color, appearance, odor, and check for other characteristics, perhaps insoluble materials or unusual foaming of the sample. In the laboratory, we have several tools to determine specimen validity. We can test the pH level, specific gravity, creatinine concentration, the presence or absence of uric acid, which is normally present in urine, or even additives not normally found in human urine to help us identify potential tampering. It's important to note that not all abnormal drug test results are the result of tampering. There are, of course, some health lifestyle or environmental reasons that can cause unexpected or invalid drug testing results. So it's important to speak with the individual if this occurs to identify other potential causes. However, absent these possibilities, invalid results may be interpreted as an attempt to conceal drug use and can have significant implications, including loss of employment, being discharged from a treatment program, or even legal consequences. So now, let's review some of the methods of attempted tampering found on the internet, which we often get questioned about. Let's start with water. There's a misconception that drinking excessive amounts of water in an attempt to flush drugs out of the system faster will go unnoticed at the laboratory. One of the specimen validity markers performed in the laboratory is a creatinine test. Creatinine is a byproduct of muscle metabolism and this chemical is naturally eliminated in the urine at a relatively stable rate. Most urine samples will have a creatinine value somewhere between 20 and 350 milligrams per deciliter. Drinking excessive amounts of water will cause urine to be dilute, reducing the creatinine concentration and flagging the specimen for a failed validity test. The creatinine level may be so low as to classify it as, as dilute, less than 20 milligrams per deciliter, or even substituted, less than two milligrams per deciliter. Even though a test comes back as negative for a drug test, when combined with a dilute or substituted creatinine result, drug testing results should be considered invalid. Drinking excessive amounts of water can also be extremely dangerous. Drinking too much can lead to water intoxication, which can be fatal. While there's no defined quantity that can lead to water intoxication, it can occur when too much water is consumed too quickly, causing severe loss of electrolytes, especially sodium, resulting in seizures, brain damage, coma, and even potentially death. Next, let's talk about products that claim to cleanse or detox drugs out of the system prior to a drug test. Most of these products contain high levels of caffeine, diuretics, or other substances like creatine and niacin, or claim to boost metabolism to eliminate drugs from the body faster. The mode of action of almost all of these products is to increase urination, 
especially if they also require mixing with large quantities of water or drinking large quantities of water with these substances. Just like in the previous water example, this will likely result in a dilute sample with a low creatinine concentration and negative drug testing results would be considered invalid. Some of these products can also cause unwanted side effects and potentially be dangerous. Excessive doses of niacin and creatine alone or in combination with other substances or medications can cause digestive issues, dehydration, or kidney and liver damage. Additionally, large doses of niacin have been shown to cause cardiovascular disease. Baking soda and water is another commonly suggested drug detox that is ineffective and potentially dangerous. While baking soda is commonly touted as a natural antacid that is safe in small doses, typically no more than a quarter teaspoon, consuming excessive amounts to beat a drug test can result in serious electrolyte and acid base imbalances leading to respiratory, cardiac, and neurologic effects. Abdominal pain, vomiting, and even gastric perforation have also been noted. The next solution is a very old myth. Golden seal is an herb in the buttercup family. It's commonly used in supplements and is believed to help a variety of ailments. The myth that golden seal can mask drugs in urine tests, particularly morphine, comes from a fictional plot of a novel written in the 1900s. Suggestions and products on the internet instruct patients to drink large amounts of water with a supplement or as a tea. Golden Seal's ability to mask drugs has been scientifically disproven many times, but the myth persists today. And as we know, consuming large quantities of water may cause a dilute specimen and invalidate a drug test result. Large doses of Golden Seal can also be dangerous. It can cause mild to moderate toxicity, including digestive irritation, seizures, and respiratory failure. It may also precipitate drug interactions. For example, it may increase the effectiveness of anticoagulants, resulting in increased bleeding events. It has also been shown to influence the effectiveness of hypertensive medications, causing both abnormally low, or in some cases, high blood pressure. As I've described, all of these options that claim to remove drugs from the body or mask a drug in a sample usually rely on an individual consuming large quantities of liquids or diuretics, which will most often result in a dilute sample and an invalid test result. Another type of tampering is adulteration, or the addition of a substance directly to the sample to destroy drugs in the specimen or interfere with its detection. In addition to common household products like vinegar, bleach, eye drops, or salt, there are several commercial products available on the internet that claim to work. Often, these additives can be identified at the point of collection. An experienced collector is trained to look for any unusual colors, odors, or sediments that could be signs of tampering or substitution before the sample is even sent to the laboratory. The collector may also shake the sample to see if it bubbles. Urine that has excessive foam can indicate the presence of an additive. The additives will also commonly affect the characteristics of a specimen like pH or specific gravity. Validity testing in the laboratory will detect abnormal results as well as a variety of specific adulterants. In the past, it was relatively easy to detect synthetic urine in the laboratory. However, synthetic urine has become far more sophisticated in recent years, and most on the market now are designed to contain levels of specific gravity, uric acid, pH, and creatinine consistent with authentic human urine. So how do we detect tampering in the case of substitution with the synthetic urine? Like adulteration, direct observation of the sample is the first step. In addition to looking at appearance and odor, urine specimens must fall within a specific temperature range to be considered valid. Heating fake urine to just the right temperature without being detected is tricky. If the sample is outside of the acceptable range, the collector will note it and possibly ask the patient to produce a new sample. The collector can also shake the sample. Proteins in authentic human urine will cause bubbles when the sample is agitated. Excessive foam or no bubbles can be indication that a synthetic urine was used. 
this too would be reported and another sample requested. Additionally, in the laboratory, there are validity tests aimed at detecting compounds present in authentic urine that do not occur in synthetic urine. Those are some of the more common examples that we get questions about at the laboratory, but they're not the only ones. The market for products to attempt to beat drug tests is always evolving, but so is the laboratory testing. New assays and methods to detect tampering are continually being improved and developed. To learn more about Navis's drug testing options, visit our website at navisclinical.com.